My name is Jennifer Swanson, and I am excited to be a part of the STEAM Race to Space Reading Challenge. I'm coming at you from Jacksonville, Florida, which is on the other side of the country, and I'm thrilled to be able to present my book, Everything You Need to Ace Chemistry, in one big fat notebook. So I don't know about you, but I love chemistry. I think it's really cool. It's the science of, you know, particles and the molecular level and how everything works. And it's really interesting to learn. And I think it's something everybody should learn. But I will tell you something. Um, when I took chemistry in high school, I liked it. And then I went on to take chemistry in college. In fact, I majored in chemistry at the United States Naval Academy where I went. And it was a bit hard for me. Um, there's a lot of concepts in chemistry. Um, there's a lot of things that kind of go together and you need to understand one to get to the other, to get to the other. Um, but really overall, once you can kind of pick up the pattern and understand certain things, then it starts to make sense. And that's what we tried to do um, with this book is I wanted to give you some of the tricks and tips that I learned as I did chemistry. And actually I relearned a lot while I was writing this book and hopefully it will help you through your chemistry class so that you can understand it a lot better. But I can keep talking. What I wanna do is show you the inside of the book. So I'm going to share my screen. There we go. Oops, we'll go back one, there we go. Okay, so this is what the inside of the book looks like. It's very inviting. It has lots of illustrations and colors and even a little few doodles um, to make you feel kind of at home. If I read this, it says, this notebook is designed to support you as you work through chemistry. Consider this book to be a compilation of notes taken by the smartest person in your chemistry class, the one who gets everything and takes clear, understandable and accurate notes. Hint, that wasn't always me with the notes. Um, but this book is very organized. In fact, um, what we, I want you to do as you go through it is re remember to look at the words that are highlighted in yellow because those are important vocabulary words and they're explained, they're defined in the text because you may need to know them for your class. Um, look for the blue ink because that has related terms and concepts that are written there. And then be sure to take a look at some of the examples and the calculations that we have where we go step by step by step and walk you through some of the maybe more difficult concepts and calculations so you can see what's happening. That's always helpful, right? Okay, so what topics does it cover? Um, it covers a lot. Um, just like your chemistry class probably does. We have the basics of chemistry, which is introductions, um, how to do those experiments and write lab reports. And if you have to write lab reports, I'm imagining all your hands are going up um, and evaluating results. And then we have scientific tools. Um, and then it jumps right in and kind of, it's maybe a little bit of a review for some of you that might've had this earlier. It's all about matter, um, the states of matter, what's an atom, what's an element, what's a compound, what's a mixture, and all these different things. We have atomic theory and electron configuration. Um, elements and the periodic table. That's actually one of my favorite parts. When I was in college, I had almost the entire periodic table memorized, which you might find a bit sad, I don't know. <laughs> but it's actually really helpful in your head when you're a chemistry major to understand where all of the elements go in the periodic table. Um, bonding and Vesper theory. And this is probably where you get into a little bit more of the in-depth chemistry and how the molecules are made up and why they're shaped the way they are. Um, these are all most likely concepts that you're studying in your class right now or will study, right? Um, unit six is chemical compounds. These are, you know, which elements interact together to form a bigger compound. Like for example, water. We all know water. Its co chemical compound is H2O. So it's two hydrogens and an oxygen. But the interesting thing is how does that atom or excuse me, molecule look, right? Does it, is it, how is it shaped and why is it shaped that way? And these are all questions that you'll want to know when you're looking, when you're understanding chemistry. We have chemical reactions and calculations. This might be the fun part for those of you that like to be in the lab and do the reactions. Um, any of you as a kid do the baking soda 
um, volcano and the, the Coke and the baking soda volcano that yeah, this is the chem, this is where you would write out the chemical reaction to that experiment. So it's lots of fun. Um, we have gases in unit eight. Um, and again, uh, the big, the one that we think about all the time is oxygen, right? Which whose chemical compound is O2. Um, and you're gonna learn about how gases work. There's laws, there's, there's a lot of laws for chemistry and for science, but it's just so that we can understand it a little bit better. Like, why does this happen? Um, scientists are, are really into why does this happen? Which I think is so cool because I, those are the questions that I ask all the time. Um, unit nine is solutions and solubility. We have acids and bases, chemical compounds, and finally thermodynamics, which is um, the first and second law of ther thermodynamics and reaction rates, which is how fast that chemical reaction goes. Going back to you know the Coke and the and the the baking soda or the Mentos or whatever you use, if you pour them in faster or different actual you know use different levels or different amounts, that's all going to affect reaction rates. So these are all the things that that this book covers. Now let me say, this is not a book that you're going to read from beginning to end, right? You'll probably go to the section that you might need help with, or maybe the section that you're working in your classroom with. When I wrote this book, we actually looked at five different states to get an idea of how they taught, um, the order in which they taught these subjects. And that's how this book was set up. All right, so now let's take a look at some pages. All right, we're gonna skip to bonding, chapter 14. So this is all about chemical bonding. And you'll see that we have a doodle, okay? We have um, an eight walking along with a top hat and cane um, that talks about something. But in and amongst all of the kind of funny stuff, hopefully that you find funny, um, we, we actually have real science. So when two or more atoms combine, they form a chemical bond. It's in yellow, remember that, you're gonna need that. The force that holds the atoms together. So that right there is the definition. So make sure you understand that, you know, we have the bolded yellow, then the definition. Um, atoms form chemical bonds to complete their outer energy levels and become more stable. Only the electrons in the outer shell, the valence electrons form chemical bonds. And atoms form bonds according to the octet rule. And we have the octet rule is highlighted in a purple kind of box there. Those are good things to pay attention to. But my favorite part about this spread is the other side where we actually show you two atoms, one of sodium, one of chloride, and when they actually bond, they make, anybody know? Table salt, right? Sodium chloride, table salt. So we like to use, you know, it's, it is totally true to say chemistry is all around you. It's in everything you do. Um, it took chemistry to make the clothes that you wear, to make the shampoo that goes on your hair when you wash it, all of these things. Um, so that's what we try to do with this. And we show big pictures that show the valence electrons are in the outermost level and explain how those are the ones that interact, not the ones closer to the nucleus. Um, and, and here on the next page, we talk about the different types of bonds. And these are, again, all things that you're gonna need to know for your tests and to just basically understand how atoms and molecules work and so forth. Um, we have ionic, covalent, and metallic bonds. And then each of those are described, okay? And explained and tells you an ionic bond only occurs or typically occurs between metal and non-metal ions. A covalent occurs between two non-metals and metallic really only occurs between metals. And you'll see there's, I mean, there's a lot of information. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, chemistry itself, there's a lot of information that comes at you, but hopefully by using this book, we set it up in such a way so that you can, we, that we've broken it down so you can take a look at it in steps. And yes, there's, there's a lot, to memorize, but I think if you can put it together and understand it and make sense of it, 
you know, then it'll help you with the rest of it. We have metals versus non-metals. Let's see. The next one is chemical calculations. And this is where I told you, um, sometimes when they have you do um, calculations with, you know, that are math, or in this case, we're doing multiple stoichiometry and we're understanding how um, the, the, we're measuring the amount of reactants and products in a chemical reaction. And you're probably like, I don't even know what you just said. It makes sense. It does. <laughs> but if you look over here at the bottom, let's see if you can see my little arrow here, this explains to you how they relate to each other. Okay. And, and so we go through all of these examples and here, you know, the questions, and then um, we help you solve world problems. So for in this, for example, in this one, it's in the equation, nitrogen plus three hydrogen equals two NH3 which is ammonia, how many moles of ammonia will be produced when 4.0 moles of hydrogen reacts completely with nitrogen? It's, you can figure this out, don't worry, okay? And then we take you through step by step how this works, okay? You see all this right over here? It tells you step one, step two, step three, step four. And then you get to go through at the end, I'll show you, there's a quiz to kind of check what you knew. Um, and then this actually shows you what's happening. So we have the ammonium particle and we increase the pressure. And there's another thing here. There's another question here about changing volume and changing temperature. And all of this can affect how a, um, how a reaction takes place and so forth. But again, I know that there are a lot of words when you look on the page, but it's actually Again, step by step and going through and, and just looking, working it through piece by piece. And then at the end of every chapter, we will have, sometimes we'll have a things to know, which is kind of like, this is the stuff you should have gotten out of this chapter, right? The really important stuff. And finally, we have a check your knowledge. So we have, we'll ask you some things that we think you should know. It's kind of almost like a mini quiz just to test what you learned, test what you learned in the, in the chapter. And on the next page are all the answers. Okay, so that's pretty much how the book works. Um, you, you know, I could read it, but it's better to, if you just kind of thumb through it, right? And you say, oh, I need to know this section or whatever. And you pick out the sections that work for you at that particular time. Okay, so I hope you enjoy everything to ACE Chemistry in One Big Fat Notebook. Be sure to participate in the STEAM Race to Space Reading Challenge. And some ideas for teachers to, to use this with your students, um, have them use the quizzes in the back. You can just pull out some of the quiz questions and ask them these different topics. You could assign them in partners and have them teach each other. Um, different parts of chemistry. There's a lot of different ideas that you can do in here, including um, just having them go through some calculations that might be in the book and just check their work. Um, it's a really fun book. And you know what? I hope at the end, you'll find that chemistry is pretty fun because I did. Um, I had so much fun talking to you today. Uh, again, my name is Jennifer Swanson. If you wanna find me, my website is jenniferswansonbooks.com. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I am at Jen Swan Books, or through my science podcast for kids, which is called at Kids Solve. Uh, you can buy this book at local bookstores or online retailers, or go ask your library for it and see if they have it. Um, so have a wonderful day, and remember, science. Rocks.